If you Google fig buttercup, also known as lesser celandine, you may find someone ooing and aahing over what they call a pretty wildflower. Or you may find a nursery trying to sell it to you. But more and more, you will see expressions of alarm. What is going on? First, a little background. Fig buttercup is an early blooming perennial with origins in Europe and Northern Africa. Because of its showy yellow flowers, it was introduced to the United States quite early in our history and apparently was enjoyed in gardens for many years, primarily in the Northeast. It was first documented as naturalized in Pennsylvania in 1867. More recently, across its adopted range, its behavior has transitioned or is in the process of transitioning to that of an aggressive invasive species. This delay is called lag time and is not fully understood, but the phenomenon is well documented. Japanese honeysuckle, for example, was planted as an ornamental for 80 years before it escaped cultivation. In Cleveland, Ohio in the 1970s, Lesser Celandine was planted in the flower beds at two homes. Less than 40 years later, it had taken over nearly 300 acres of parkland along the Rocky River. Even after its invasiveness was recognized, many people did not anticipate that it would behave invasively in the South. This infestation in Raleigh started in a homeowner's backyard compost pile, then followed a drainage ditch downstream under a culvert to spread out along the banks of a local creek. An infestation in Rock Hill also began in a backyard, followed a drainage ditch downhill to a small stream where it has colonized land across the creek for a distance of about a half mile. Checking back in on this same waterway, two and a half miles downstream and now much larger, Vicaria has already established a beachhead. No idea how it got started in the Smokies, right along Highway 441. There are several infestations in Charlotte, this one along a sewer line in Renaissance Park. A landscape planting in Asheville has spread along the UNC Asheville Greenway and into the botanical gardens there. Scattered plants can now be found along Reed Creek all the way to the French Broad River. In 2013, Fig Buttercup was discovered along a mile and a half of Reedy River floodplain in Lake Conestee Nature Park, south of Greenville. The infestation consists both of loosely connected patches as well as an extensive mat of vegetation covering almost a half acre. These and other infestations in the southeast display the behavior of an aggressively invasive plant, albeit one that is still legally sold and shared in 48 states. Fig Buttercup has provided us with textbook examples of what it is capable of doing to bottomlands throughout the south. If, and it's a big if, if we can persuade our regulatory agencies to act, we have a chance to stop this. The documented infestations in the South are widely scattered, and because of that, perhaps, many people are unaware of or continue to ignore its very real threat. We are asking you to help us scout likely areas so that emerging infestations can be documented, monitored, and with landowners' cooperation, treated. This location data will also be used to help persuade others of the seriousness of the threat to the South's riparian zones.
Its preferred habitat is moist, deciduous woods near water. Ironically, the same type of site preferred by many of our favorite native spring ephemeral wildflowers. But it's also at home in a sunny wet field or an intermittently wet drainage ditch. Vicarious proximity to a water source facilitates its bulblets and root fragments being washed downstream to colonize new areas, and it is often found downstream of a landscape planting. So what does it look like? Plants consist of a basal rosette of dark green leaves that vary from kidney-shaped to heart-shaped. The root tubers are the most reliable character for identification. These can break off easily to start new plants. Recent studies indicate that Ficaria verna is composed of five different subspecies, all of which look very much alike. This slide shows subspecies Ficaria formis. Notice that it's kind of husky, larger, and stouter. And this is subspecies Verna. It's smaller and more slender. Both of these have been found in Greenville County. These same two subspecies form axillary bulblets, which provide yet another way for them to reproduce vegetatively. This is what they look like in April, and this is what they look like in February when they're sprouting. Fig buttercup can create dense mats of vegetation, and when it does that, it's very easy to recognize. But sometimes you'll encounter an isolated rosette that's non-flowering, and it's possible to confuse it with the innocent kidney leaf buttercup, which also emerges pretty early. The flowers, of course, are very different, but the leaves of both of them feel kind of rubbery. And to make it more confusing, Ficaria's leaf shape is so variable. But if you turn the leaves over, the netted venation on the underside of Ficaria leaves is usually quite prominent, almost reptilian. It emerges very early, in midwinter, before most indigenous plants. It's easiest to spot when it's blooming, and that will probably be March and early April. There is variation in the flowers, both among subspecies and across the flowering season. But look for pouch-like sepals and bright yellow petals that have a darker base. Midway through bloom time, its susceptibility to herbicides decreases, and the above ground parts start to die back. Very soon there won't be anything to see, not even dried up leaves, just bare soil or bulbs on top of bare soil. It's almost like shortly after you notice it, it vanishes. But it's not gone. That soil may contain many small bulbs, as well as a dense network of root tubers that break off easily if disturbed. Each one of these vegetative propagules is a new plant in the making. This is one of the reasons Ficaria is so difficult to get rid of once established. Over and over again, people say that when they planted it, when it was given to them, when they saw it for the first time, that they thought it was marsh marigold. It does look maybe a little bit like marsh marigold, but marsh marigold has sepals only. It doesn't have petals. It doesn't have bulblets. It doesn't have tubers, and it grows in clumps, and it never grows in extensive mats. Marsh marigold is rare in North Carolina, and it is not known to grow wild in South Carolina or Georgia. By now, you should have a good idea of what it looks like, when it will be easiest to spot, where you might expect to find it, and why it is important that its presence be documented. Please share this knowledge with your friends, neighbors, and colleagues. And please take it to the field by scouting likely sites near you. We feel that a high priority needs to be placed on the scouting of natural areas surrounding and downstream of urban waterways. Please report your findings to figbuttercup at scnps.org. If you find something, please send good clear pictures of flowers, leaves, and roots, as well as the date you looked and detailed location information. Even if you don't find anything, please tell us where and when you looked.